Nick, how does firing David Coley make the Texans look? Yeah, I mean, I think the start is not a great look, but I think it depends on what they do next. And I try to be as honest and fair as I can be on these issues. So I'd be lying if I say that race does not play some factor in many of the decisions that are made in NFL. I believe that to be the case. But the Cully situation, I think, is slightly different than the Flores situation because I think David Cully took a job last year that, frankly, my guess is no one really wanted. It was kind of a, a bad job. Deshaun Watson wanted out. There's the mire of his um, sexual assault mm -hmm. accusations over the organization. It seemed like a job that no one really wanted. And they got David Culley, who at the time was 66 years old, or now is 66 years old, had never been a coordinator, and it appeared like he was not on head coach track. They took somebody in that situation who they wanted that could be respectable, respectable and mind the store until they found their next coach, until they found another coach. David Culley probably outperformed their expectations, but I don't think that it changed the long-term plan. David Culley at 66 years old was never going to be the long-term plan for them. And why I think it matters what they do next is because, frankly, Flores was fired, who is a Patriots guy, who is a, a Nick Casario is from the Patriots. And it seems to me like that is the perfect sort of upgrade that's available. If they make that upgrade, that to me makes sense. Is they got David Culley, they asked David Culley to hold things down, to be a respectable face, make this team overachieve for one season, we'll pay you $22 million, and then when we find our guy, we'll have to let you go. Like that to me feels like a reasonable decision to make as long as the next decision they make is for an obvious upgrade at coach, which I think Brian Flores is, and also a cultural fit which I think Brian Flores is, given his history uh, at New England, along with Nick, Nick Casario's history at New England. Brian Flores, he's going to be in high demand, I think. So I think a lot of teams they are going to be after up. him. Yeah, I think this move makes the Texans look bad. I really do. Uh, and I found it, you know, for a couple reasons. Let's just address the reasons first. Number one, uh, he outperformed what was expected of him, right? Four wins at a team that didn't have J.J. Watt, didn't have DeAndre Hopkins, didn't have uh, really a lot of uh, superstar players playing with your third-string quarterback, a rookie who you drafted uh, in the third round. And he outperformed. He did well. And then at the beginning, uh, Casario of the season, Casario talked about, uh, hey, we're about culture and building a winning culture. It's not necessarily going to be about uh, the results. And that's what he said before the season began. He said, this is actually not going to be about the results per se. Uh, it's going to be about building that culture. And David Culley did that. So to get fired uh, at this point uh, proves to me that you never intended to keep him in the first place. That's number one. Number two, uh, I would say just to Neek's point about, well, it depends what they do next. I'm not really as concerned with what they do next. I think the Texans have proven that they're an organization uh, that, that doesn't do things the right way, right? You hire a search firm last year to go find a new GM and you pay him half a million dollars, $500,000 for this outside search firm. Then all of a sudden, Cal McNair says, you know what? Casario's available. I like him. Bump the search firm. I'm gonna go take the guy that I want. For me, that's bad business. You're talking about uh, when Bill O'Brien was there, trading away all these guys, all your superstar players. For me, that's bad business. Uh, business. And then this move right here is saying there are philosophical uh, differences, uh, and that's the reason why you're going a different direction. That's bad business. Now to address Neek's point, which I agree with, right? We can't just look by and say, well, this has nothing to do uh, with race. I think race does play somewhat of an issue in this, and it's hard to argue against it. There's only one black coach in the NFL at this point in time. And yes, there's a lot of mm -hmm. chatter of, man, Brian Flores, he's going to get interviews. And man, Eric Bieniemy is right. going to get interviews. And man, all these black coaches, they are going to be great candidates. They were going to look up in three months from now and see two, maybe three black coaches in the NFL consistently over and over again. And so for me, it's great talk, right? It's all talk and chatter and sounds good. But I want to see results. We talk about the NFL being a results-oriented business, right, when it comes to uh, who are your coaches. Uh, that is a real thing. But my issue is when you go out and say, and actually wrote it down, let me see if I can find it. Um, when you go out and say that uh, it's not as, this is quote verbatim, it's not as much of an outcome-oriented business. This is Nick Casario before the season. It's not as much of an outcome-oriented business as a process-oriented business. And that's what we're trying to do and build. Right. That's what he said. So, 
So I'm we're talking not, about building I'm, processes and changing culture. No, no, you're, we're on the same page. We're on the same page. When we're talking no, about no, building not, processes right. and changing culture, you have to – it takes time, right? Zach Taylor, when he first got to the Bengals, was 4-12, and 12, right? Imagine if he would have been fired after his right. first year, right? But all of a sudden, right. they're in the playoffs. I, and so, for me, I understand. Bad look. I understand that. I understand that. But Zach Taylor was the – and I'm not going to find myself – defending Zach Taylor or find myself defending the Houston Texans or organization. But I don't think that the decision that they made yesterday shows that they are not, they, they, that they don't have a process. I think the idea that process over results matters, I think that matters. If their process was, we are going to bring in David Culley to be a stopgap until we find our coach of the future, then this is consistent with the process if, which is why I said it matters what they do next. If they bring in a significantly younger coach who mm -hmm. obviously is an upgrade, then to me it seems like what they did made sense. They had a reasonably successful year considering the expectations. They did not embarrass themselves any further, and you went down a list of many embarrassing things that they have done. They did not embarrass themselves any further. They positioned themselves to make an upgrade at coach. If they are able to do that, then this seems like it is consistent with them having some sort of process. I'm certainly not caping for Nick Casario. I was very critical of that hire because of his lack of experience and kind of coming from an unorthodox direction. I agree with all of that, and I think it is fair to be critical of them for moving on from David Culley, even though he overachieved. But I think it's also reasonable that last year, at this time, they looked at their options, and they were like, hey, this coach is awesome. Assuming they were like, all right, hey, awesome coach, here's an opportunity. He said no. They did another one. He said no. They did another one. He said no. Then they said, you know what? We need to take a chill for a year. We're going to hire this guy who honestly, like I think can be fair. I don't believe he had any other interviews and probably likely without this opportunity would not have been a head coach. We are going to put him in and allow him to fill this void if it's for one year or for two years until we can find our long term answer. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.